Look, let's look at verse 12. He says, For thou didst it secretly. You want to hear me today? Uh, the things that you do secretly can become known. The things that you do secretly can be brought into the light. The Bible says, Be sure your sins will find you out. If David had said that prayer before he went on the roof, he would have been, he would have been different. You say, why in the world did David uh, do this? I have observed that young men that are, that are struggling to get up, whether it's in business, whether it's in the ministry, or, or wherever it is, they live fairly good lives, you know, when they're struggling to get up. But when a man thinks and feels that he has security, when a man thinks or feels he has achieved something, that is the dangerous spot in his life. That's when he can have real trouble. That's when he can have great trouble when he gets into a situation like that. That means that he has come to depend upon himself, that he has come to believe that he is self-sufficient and that he doesn't really need God, you know. David was a warrior, but he wasn't out to the battle. His men were at the battle, and he was home. See, that is a dangerous thing. Whatever you're supposed to be doing, you ought to be doing, you know. When you are derelict in your business, the devil has an opportunity to hurt you that he never had before. And you better know that. You better, better realize that. Uh, when you got a job to do, if you don't do it, the devil can move in with temptations that you would never have had. If David would have been at the battlefront, he'd have had no temptation that day. And if he had been busy, here he was, <laughs> here he was, lounging on the housetop down here in his palace. Lounging on his housetop, looking over into someone else's yard. See, looking over into someone else's yard where he had no business looking whatsoever. And that was the day, that was the day of his problem. He, he didn't have God to help him. Well, he wasn't doing what he was supposed to do. He wasn't where he was supposed to be. And, and because of that, the temptation of sin hit him and knocked him over. He said, I'll bring evil against you and your house, and I will take thee out of thine own house, and, and I will make thy wives before thine eyes commit fornication with, with, with your neighbors. And then verse 12 says, For thou didst it secretly, but I will, I will do this thing before all Israel and before the sun. Not only that, but 3,000 years later, 3,000 years later, people mock him and laugh at him because of the sin that he committed. It wasn't that he didn't have a wife. He had plenty of wives. It wasn't that he, that, that, that he needed intercourse. He had plenty of it. It was that he was greedy inside. It was like that he had lost God on the inside. And, and he found himself in a place he never would have dreamed it. Yeah, when it came to a lamb, <laughs> he said, let the man die. He stole that lamb. And the man only had one. Uriah only had one wife. So he took his lamb, you see. And God said, because you did it, the sword will never leave your house. There, there, there are sins that can break your relationship. Break your relationship with reality. Break your relationship with your future life. Now, it, you must know that. You must realize that. Nathan said unto David, The Lord hath also put away your sin. Because David said, I have sinned against the Lord. That's in verse 13. You know, that was a great, that, that was a beautiful aspect of David's life, you know. Uh, and David said, Now, I've sinned. You know, some people are haughty. That they are high-minded, uh, you know. Well, I don't care if I did sin. It's none of anybody's business. And they're not repentant of their sin. This thing struck David right into his heart. He, he saw the awfulness of sin. He saw the terribleness of sin. He saw how wrong he was in stealing the man's wife and having him killed at the battlefront. And when he saw it, he said, hey, he says, I, I have sinned against Jehovah. And Nathan replied to him and said, the Lord have put away thy sin from thee, and thou shalt not die. Normally, normally for that sin, he would have died. God would have struck him down with disease or something, and he would have died. But he said, because of your, of your spirit within you, of sorrow and asking forgiveness, and because of that, then I, then I will forgive your sin. Habit, verse 14, because of this deed, thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of Jehovah to blaspheme. I'd like to pause for just a moment there and I'd like to speak to religious leaders and church leaders uh, you, you have an obligation to God and you have an obligation to the church to live right David had an obligation there in that palace yeah 
Every time I look at the area where David lived there, I said, Dear God, I wish David hadn't have sinned. I wish he hadn't have done it. He had such a beautiful life. Yeah, he killed lions, bears, giants. He was a brave man. He was a beautiful singer. Why did he have to do it? It was because he moved from his spirit part into his flesh part, you see. And, and when he did, he missed God. He missed God. And, and God was sorry. Yeah, God doesn't want to see you hurt. God doesn't want to see you do it. The prophet told him, says, you've given great occasion to the enemies of Jehovah to blaspheme. When a minister falls in sin, the devil makes a lot of it. The, the devil goes everywhere. He's screaming it out. Even the newspapers scream it out. If they can, a man of God can live in a city and live beautifully and do a great work for God in the newspapers, won't put that much in there about him. Let him make one little mistake in sin and they'll give him a whole page. Are you there? Yeah. The, the enemies of God, they hate the man of God. So I want to urge you in the name of Jesus Christ, if you're a leader, a Sunday school teacher, a, a deacon, an elder, or a pastor, whoever you are, don't let the enemies of God triumph. And don't let them mock and don't let them laugh and, and don't let them see there's nothing to to Christianity, nothing to the church. Please don't. 